Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for joining us for this Friday show. I'd like to thank Ray Rickman for coming in to give his big view. I'd like to welcome back a guest, probably needs no introduction. Actress, singer, producer Rose Weaver will be taking part in two stage readings at the Southside Cultural Center on Broad Street tomorrow. Rose, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate it. I see you've got some materials here. There are two stage readings tomorrow, so probably makes the most sense to break them down into the two. Yes. And let's even go back a little further how this came to be. You know, I've always tried to write about things that are important to me and I hope, hopefully important to the community. Um, and I've done Menopause Mama, everybody knows that. Um, I've done Skips in the Record about Alzheimer's disease. And this, though, is about slavery. And living in Rhode Island, but I'm from Georgia originally, although I came here when I was 18 years old, so this is really home. But I didn't know much about what happened with the, uh, during the slave time. And, and so I applied for a grant, the encouragement of a friend, to the Heritage Harbor Foundation, and they gave me the grant to actually write a piece examining theatrically the slave ship Sally, that's a slave ship that the Brown University brothers sent to West Africa to pick up slaves. Mm. One of the most disastrous slave journeys um, in the history of slavery. Um, besides ships just actually sinking. Um, and I wrote it, and I based it on materials that are in the John Carter Brown Library. There's this wonderful book called Black Mechanic. And you know, this is the Center for the Study of Slavery and Justice at Brown University, so they've really done a lot to educate us, and that's what it's all about. Education through the arts, from my perspective. And so Heritage Harbor Commission was kind enough to award me a grant to be able to put together, I've got a group of 10 actresses, um, and we get on stage and we tell some of the stories. And uh, some of the stories based on a poem in this book um, called Black Mechanics by a wonderful poet named um, Evie Shockley. And, and then Barnaby Evans helped put together this one. A Thousand Ships back in 2008. Okay. Because, and it's called that because more than a thousand ships were shipped out, of, left Rhode Island to actually pick up slaves in West Africa. And this, p these dramatic readings, the slave ship Sally, is not about condemning you folks. All of us have some slave uh, people in our families. I mean, who, who either slaves or slave owners. And Rhode Island, unfortunately, had one of the largest numbers. Uh, in the, in the colonies. And this is now the first one is Sally, a black woman's journey from Africa to enslavement in Rhode Island. So talk with us about the process and what folks will hear in this, in this first reading. A lot of research has gone into finding out what happened to the women, and, but there are hardly any narratives from black women. But there are a lot of black men and mm -hmm. white men who talk about what happened to the black women, so I've tried to piece it together. Okay. And these actresses, they're so good, from Becky Bass, Angela nash Wade, Sylvia Ann Soares, are so incredible. They sing, and there is music. We do some singing. Um, but a stage reading is still a work in progress. That's why it's important that the community comes to tell us what they think and, and, and give us thoughts and ideas to help us make it even better, because eventually it'll be a full-fledged play. Let's go. Oh, you're gonna make this into a full play. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. And again, made possible through the Heritage Harbor Museum. Well, no, then I'll have to look for other funding. Well, hopefully they <laughs> might look a little deeper into their pockets. This was part one, but obviously this is going to be um, uh, quite the experience tomorrow at the Southside Cultural Center. And then part two, black women taking off the mask. Taking off the mask. And my feeling is that black women have often bitten their tongues um, when they want to say one thing, they said another. You know, we've been often called the angry black woman. Even uh, Michelle Obama was called an angry black woman, though she was just speaking your mind. She was being assertive. Mm. Um, and so they're different words. But we've been described as the angry black woman with the head shaking <laughs> and everything. And um, But you, I have to ask the question, why? Mm. So underneath it is, I say, maybe we haven't been loved enough. Maybe we haven't been cared for enough. Maybe there's stuff like that that causes that. And so I'm exploring that with our, my actresses to ask these questions. Have you been loved enough? Have you been held? And what kind of support have you had? You know, we're always talking about the white women being on a pedestal. And when, we, when I say pedestal, I'm talking about a foundation. Mm. A lot of women are beautiful. And yes, you know, your standard of beauty is what the, the country has judged us by and everything else, but you know, it's changing. Mm -hmm. 
but that foundation from, from the cradle to tomb uh, su of support, educationally, financially, lovingly, I mean, everything. And so that second part deals with us taking off masks and saying, yes, we feel this way, but here's the reason why. And you talk about talking with women about this. Did you talk with the actresses, talk with folks in the community? How did this second reading sort of come Ooh, together? Oh, I <laughs> gathered stuff. I mean, even sitting at Thanksgiving or at a party, uh, at, a, at a function, I would just listen and I would ask questions and I started just listening to what people were saying and I just started taking notes, which is the way you really get the real deal. Yeah. You have to write, write it down and share it. I mean, as an example, I have a girlfriend who's, you know, and my mother did this to me sometimes, bless her heart, I loved her, and I still love her, but she would cuss me out about my hair, you know, and make me wear a wig all the time because I didn't look good enough for the white folks. I imagine this is going to be part of the second reading. I can see it here now. You had this great picture, and when you're watching or reading this after the fact, it's the actresses all behind the fans and then your face and it's really again taking off the masks taking off the mask and I don't use the traditional mask because I didn't want to be that literal mm. but the fans also give us a chance to like you know peep over and do things and play well it sounds like it's going to be a fantastic event tomorrow again at the Southside Cultural Center we'll provide links to it as well anything else you want folks to know while we have you here in studio both about tomorrow's production or anything else you want to share I just I want to say thank you, community, for always supporting us artists. We need that. We can't survive without it. And even though our town is small and there's tons of stuff going on, always a lot of creative um, people doing. And so I just give me a share. <laughs> okay. And I always love listening to Go Local. It's just fantastic. And I hear you're doing obituaries now. Uh, that we are. There's a lot going on here, but nothing better than getting folks here into the studio to tell the stories, let folks know what's going on. We'll provide, again, the links to what's taking place on Saturday. Again, two stage readings at the Southside Cultural Center. Starting on time at 2.30. 2.30. Now, after, um, you know, let's talk a little bit um, uh, any opportunity for conversation yes. for, uh, beyond. So let's yes. talk a little bit about the after. Um, this one we'll have about a half an hour. If we can keep it on time, we'll have about half an hour Discussion. To, to hear people's ideas yeah. and, and uh, discuss, yes. And how important is it that the entire community turn out for this? That Very important. That folks I mean, come and listen and participate. And participate. Well, it's very important. And I noticed that uh, Friday night, Oscar Eustis is going to, that's tonight. Oscar uses. <laughs> Oscar uses. People just, you know, those tickets went like, they had to move the venue from the Athenaeum to Unitarian Church. Yeah. But it's important to us because we can't get it right without the community. Mm. Everyone needs to be part of the conversation. Well, look forward to featuring this here tomorrow on Go Local, but Rose Weaver, as always, appreciate your taking the time Thank to come you. here into the Thank studio. You. You're so wonderful. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Neil Steinberg with the Rhode Island Foundation to talk about their new education initiative. We'll be right back. <laughs>